Pigeon Street was a um, children's television series that the BBC commissioned in the 1980s and it was on for most of that decade. It was kind of a soap opera for uh, children, so under five, so this is a preschool programme. Um, and it, was, it concerned uh, a group of people who lived in a, a street called Pigeon Street, obviously overlooked by pigeons who um, who really were just links to from one scene to another. So it was kind of a Coronation Street for uh, children. Pigeon Street was very reality based. It wasn't, there were, there were no talking animals, there were no elves or fairies. Um, it was just based in reality. And the reason that came about was the, because the BBC wanted to replace Trumpton and Camberwick Green. The technique that I, I used for Pigeon Street was um, cut out animation. And uh, this means that you use, uh, you make, you, you draw the characters on paper and then cut them out. So you've got arms and heads and legs and bodies and you assemble them to form what effectively is a two dimensional puppet. I think the music was a really important part of, uh, of, of Pigeon Street. Uh, partly just because I've always been very interested in music myself, but there was actually a practical reason really, was that because there were 30 characters, every time you introduced a new character, um, you had to say something to sum them up, to remind the children what that character was about. So Clara, for example, had her own song. Uh, the big plus about that was you could use the song every week, which meant that although we had to fill 15 minutes of airtime, uh, we could fill up a little bit of that from a, by, by a generic song that we'd made for a previous episode. So um, every time Clara came into the story, you would often get Clara's theme. You'd show the story of her driving her truck across the Sahara and all that stuff, which, which would remind children uh, who, exactly who she was. They would also have the familiarity of that song, uh, which they would like anyway because they'd get to know those songs and the other bonus was that we would fill up some of our 15 minutes without having to reshoot anything we could simply reuse what we'd shot before. Pigeon Street was shown all the way through the, the 1980s on TV and then there came a period of time where it went off air and the only way you could see Pigeon Street was by uh, buying the video which was available for a while this was on VHS um, and I think only four episodes. I don't think we ever did put all 13 episodes. And actually people might be surprised there were only 13 episodes, but there were. Um, but most of those episodes weren't available. Um, so there was a generation of people, I think, who grew up from remembering T uh, Pigeon Street from when they were five, but not being able to really see it. Um, and it developed quite a, a cult status, I think, that way. Uh, in the And this wasn't done intentionally. I mean, it was just that the VHS came out and uh, that was available for a while. Eventually you would only be able to buy that second hand. So we've remastered the series and got it as good as I dare get it for the kind of money that I can afford to spend. So it's not HD, but it's certainly better than any 16mm film was ever seen at the time. I'm, I'm hoping, I don't think most people will remember the quality of it. Um, they were five year old at the time they were watching it and I don't think it's something that they remember distinctly but um, I'm hoping that the way it looks now will be more the way people remember it rather than the way it actually was because it actually wasn't um, 16 mil film used to have a lot of grain flickering we've got rid of a lot of that a lot of the horizon bobbing up and down and we've got rid of a lot of that and um, now I think it's been seen probably better than it's ever seen, been seen before.